Last time on Total Drama The Top 100, it was time to let the teams cook in our cooking competition where two members of each team nominated themselves to be Total Drama's next top chef. In the end, Sugar and Heather, Lauren and Ryan, and Lashana and Chase all had the worst dishes, so those three teams went to elimination. At elimination, it was Sugar, Courtney, and Lashana that got the boot and had to say goodbye to the top 100. Scott is satisfied with the progress he's made on the team before Junior comes over and asks if he's worried now that they have less members than every other team, and Scott says it's not a problem at all. In fact, if they lost one more member, they'd be perfect. Sky needs to go. Junior asks why, and Scott says that she's obviously planning on turning the girls against us. Meanwhile, the girls are talking, and Jen says that those earrings will definitely not work with that dress, and Taylor says that it looks like she's trying too hard. Blainly thanks them, saying that she would never have been able to look 100% for the cameras without them. Back with Scott and Junior, Junior says that she doesn't think that's true, but Scott says that he knows what's best because he's older. Plus, he's actually been in a total drama season. He should listen to him. Junior says alright, we can get Sky out next. Scott smiles and says that he's a good kid before patting his head and quickly pulling away when he realized what he did. Scott in confessional says that he doesn't know what came over him. It's like he's getting soft or something. Trent asks how DJ has been and DJ says that he was better when he didn't have such high expectations put onto him. Tyler agrees saying that he needs to get far to have Lindsay's hand in marriage so he understands completely. DJ asks who the shaggy looking dude is and Sean introduces himself to him saying he was a previous winner. Jerry shows up as well and says that it's nice to meet him. A little bit about himself, he hates butterscotch, his favorite color is baby blue, the kind of baby blue that's so baby you forget it's blue, and not to let him carry over 25 pounds, otherwise his arms will pop out of socket again. DJ in confessional says this wasn't exactly the team he was expecting, but she was right about there not being a lot of competition. Dave is picking up wood for a fire and Sky appears before asking how he's doing. Dave says he's doing fine, how is she? Sky says that things aren't going well. Chris interrupts them, saying it's challenge time. Today's challenge will have two teams pairing up, which means it's a double elimination tonight. These teams are randomly generated, so don't feel too bad about the results. First team are tenacious earwigs and drowning mosquitoes, hopping stink bugs and flaming cockroaches, mediocre mealworms and amber scorpions, ravenous spiders and silent crickets, and finally scheming flies and excited ants. Noah says sarcastically, oh great, we're on a team with the Canadian idiots. Lorenzo yells, saying that they're the dweeb alliance, thank you very much. First challenge is climbing up a rock wall while your competitor holds your weight. First team to do so will win immunity for their teams. Ripper says he can climb the wall easily, but Sanders says that maybe he should hold out for a challenge more suited for his skills, like something to do with his eating abilities or just his strength. Ripper says that it's nice when someone butters him up. Alright, she can go. Sanders tries to interject, saying she didn't want to go, but Justin says that's a fine plan. Rodney should be able to carry her weight, right? Rodney says that with the love in his heart, he could carry about 13 Sanders. Bowie in confessional says that Rodney really doesn't have his head in the game, but if it helps them keep their immunity, streak going. He can have his head lost in Postal for all he cares. Junior says he will do it since he is the lightest and Trent says that's a good plan little man. DJ can hold him. Heather says that Mickey should be the climber but Axel says that Mickey gets nosebleeds from too high of altitudes. He can't go. Emma says she will go but Lightning says that nobody can carry her fat butt around. Topher puts a hand on his shoulder and asks what they discussed earlier about making friends and Lightning reiterates what he says by saying, what I meant was nobody can carry you without getting distracted by our beauty. Heather raises an eyebrow at that and says that if Romeo is done flirting, she has an idea for who should go. Dawn says she will go, but Heather says that she promises Cody is at least 10 pounds lighter than her. Sierra tells Heather that if anything happens to her Cody bear, she will let her have it. Lightning says it's nothing to worry about, Lightning will carry him to the finish line. Jeff says that if anyone from his team has any ideas, they should speak their mind, and Ryan says he can hold anyone up with his muscles. Julia says that it's a good thing it doesn't require any leg strength, and Ryan says that he has more muscles than she has brain cells, and Julia says that he has them everywhere but his little chicken legs. Ryan is pissed, but Alejandro says that he's sorry for her misbehaving. He's sure he will do fantastic. Ryan calms down and says that he's sorry for getting angry. Julianne Confessional says that she doesn't need Alejandro to fight her battles. If they attack her, they get disqualified. Alejandro nominates Jay to go, and Jay says that he's never done this before, but there's a first time for anything, I guess. 
Lorenzo says that he can definitely do this, and the others in the Dweeb Alliance agree. Noah asks if there's anyone actually intelligent on their team, and Zoe chimes in, but Noah says that she couldn't even recognize that her boyfriend wasn't her boyfriend. She definitely isn't the intelligent one on her team. Whatever, Joe can carry Lorenzo, right? Joe asks who died and made him the leader, before saying that she can do it, but it was her idea, not his. As the round starts, all the little people and Sanders begin climbing, but when Chris pulls out the hot sauce and shoots DJ, DJ yells that it's in his eyes and lets go of the rope, and Scott grabs it, asking if DJ's insane, he could have seriously hurt Junior. Chris says that because Scott interfered, their pair is eliminated from this round. Scott in confessional says that definitely was intentional. Yep. Every single bit of it. Chris shoots Rodney with it, and he eats the hot sauce, saying that back on his farm he grows his own peppers that are way better than that processed crap. Damien asks how he could eat all of that without feeling a thing, and Mary just says that her man is full of surprises. Damien says that isn't like her, usually she is talking about some sciencey stuff, and Mary snaps out of it before saying that people who eat a lot of spicy foods build up a tolerance, I guess. Damien in Confessional says that it's definitely not like her not to have an answer, she must have a thing for Rodney. Before Damien can ask Mary if she likes Rodney, Chris says that flaming cockroaches and hopping stink bugs are the winners. Ripper in Confessional says that the cop is actually impressive, way better than those fat cops who get tired after 30 seconds. You two teams may rest for the week, the other pairs come with me for the next part of the challenge. The next part will have someone preparing fugu sashimi with Japanese blowfish. They have enough toxins to kill 30 people, so make sure to prepare it exactly as instructed. Millie says that Alejandro can definitely do this, right Alejandro? Alejandro says that he probably can't do this. Crimson pipes up and says that Fugu is the most goth fish of all. She knows how to prepare it because teetering between life and death is what goth is all about. Julia in confessional says that she likes the creepy goth chick. Jeff says with that much confidence he will try the food. Izzy says she can do this once she was able to suck the poison out of a rattlesnake bite and then she bit the snake and it died instead. Crazy, right? Jay says he would love to do this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity after all. Taylor mutters that it is more than likely with Izzy preparing it. Axel says that she will prepare it. It'll be an essential fish to know how to cook in the apocalypse. Dwayne says that with that much confidence, how could he not try it? Damien tells him not to. The chance of him surviving are only 1% if there's poison. And Dwayne says that if he only listens to his statistics, he wouldn't do anything. Zoe says she will cook this one, and Dave says with that much confidence, he should do it as well. Clearly nervous about doing it. During the eating portion, Dwayne says that it's amazing. It tastes unlike anything he's ever had, especially the slight bitter taste that counteracts the sweetness of the fugu. Damien asks what he means bitterness before Dwayne starts hallucinating before falling unconscious. Dave says he's sorry he can't do it after seeing what Dwayne went through. Chase tells them to suit themselves as he starts eating, and he falls to the floor, twitching and vomiting. Emma asks Izzy what the hell she did to him, and Izzy said that she probably messed up a step or two. Finally, Jeff is eating his and is just enjoying it, saying that his compliments go to the chef. This is delicious. After a few minutes and nothing bad happening, Chris announces that Tenacious Earwigs and Drowning Mosquitoes win round 2, and immunity for their teams. Everyone else, see you at round 3. At round 3, they are told they will be shooting crab apples at their teammate while blindfolded to knock an arrow off of their head. Priya is about to say she will be the shooter, but Ezekiel says he wants to shoot. He has lots of archery training, eh? Priya in confessional says that it's like she went through all of her training for nothing. Everyone on the team doesn't want to volunteer with Ezekiel shooting, so Chris chooses Noah, and he says, of course you pick me to make me suffer. Sadie says she can do this for real. She's been training for hours to get this right after her elimination last time. Sierra says that it may not be the right move, but Ella tells her to give Sadie a chance, and so Sadie is the shooter while Spud is getting shot. Sky volunteers to go, and Scott realizes he will have to do a bit of sabotage, so he steps on Jerry's foot and he yells in pain, and Chris takes that as him volunteering. Scott in confessional says that he's still got it. The round starts and Sky shoots an apple at Jerry, and Jerry falls to the ground knocked out. Jerry in Confessional says that those apples sure ain't filled with glitter, more like cement. Ezekiel begins firing wildly, hitting Noah everywhere, but Sadie is able to line up a shot and she fires and it actually knocks the arrow off of Spud's head. Chris tells them that mediocre mealworms and amber scorpions are safe. Now onto the fourth round. You must stand on a platform blindfolded and jump when your teammate tells you to jump. Hopefully your teammates will catch you, otherwise you will fall into a pond full of jellyfish. Scott says he will tell them when to jump, and Tyler says that he will go since this is extreme. Caleb says he can tell them when to jump, and Priya says she will be blindfolded then. 
Duncan rolls his eyes and Elodie asks if he's jealous of what they have, and Duncan asks why would he be? He has everything he could need here. Joe in confessional says that she's gonna start searching for the idol before the lovebirds begin kissing. When Scott and Tyler are going, Tyler says he trusts him, and Scott tells him to jump. Tyler does so and he falls into the water, and Scott says that that is what it'll sound like when he wants Tyler to jump. Tyler in confessional says that that was his bad, he should have known there would be a rehearsal. Priya is able to jump and Caleb catches her, meaning that their teams win immunity. Chris says that it's not over though. The two teams who are supposed to vote someone off come with me. Chris tells them that this will be a blind toboggan race, but it will only be done under one condition. Whoever loses will have two members eliminated from the competition instead of just one, while the winner will be safe for another week. Sky is about to say that they will just take the one elimination, but Scott says they will do it. Sky asks if he's trying to eliminate all their members, and Scott says only her. Chris says that he'll take that as Scott and Sky going. Raj says he will go, and Beardo raises his hand to go as well. Raj says that this will be great. The two begin going, and Raj and Beardo are off to a commanding lead because every time Sky tells Scott a command, he goes in the opposite direction. Sky in confessional says that it's almost like he's going in the opposite direction every. Wait a second. Sky begins saying the wrong directions and Scott begins going the right way. Raj says that they can't catch up now, they're too far, and then he hits a mine and goes flying. Scott and Sky make it to the finish line. Chris says that ravenous spiders are the winners. Raj and Beardo, I'm sorry to say, but you both are eliminated. Trent asks why they're eliminated, shouldn't there be a vote? Chris says that he clearly said whoever loses will have two members eliminated from the competition. Raj says that he thought that would include a vote. Chris says that he thought wrong. Say goodbye. Beardo does finger guns with B, and Raj is sad as he's walking off, but Bowie and Wayne go to him and say that they will make him proud, and Raj says that he wasn't worried about that. He knows they will. Scott in confessional says that she got him good, but her days are numbered, and her luck will run out eventually. And that's that for episode 10 of Total Drama The Top 100. What did you think? Question of the week. With the shakeup along the horizon, which team do you think will lose a member in a vote first? Hopping Stinkbugs or Amber Scorpions? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time on Total Drama The Top 100.